Hatshepsut gradually constructed the image of her kingly authority. Part 8. The Progressive Masculinization. After this very first phase of the reign of Hatshepsut, when she represented her royal power through the iconography of a female pharaoh, the still recently crowned sovereign started to explore new means of expressing her exceptional status, notably, as is well known, in the sense of a progressive and irreversible masculinization. The successive steps of this evolution are fixed in the iconography of different monuments. This is the case of the Southern Temple of Buin, in Lower Nubia, apparently commissioned soon after Hatshepsut's accession to full and official, kingship or even slightly before. Four consecutive stages in its decoration process are still epigraphically preserved and therefore perceptible. First, at least one scene testifies that the cutting of the reliefs started with the just-described model of a female pharaoh, represented with her queenly gown and, according to the tradition of ancient Egyptian art, with her feet set close together. Second, on two reliefs of the nearby inner sanctuary, the reigning queen was originally, still depicted garbed in a feminine dress, but with an unusually elongated stride, between the one of women and the one of men. Third, two other scenes clearly portrayed the female, sovereign with the same posture, but this time wearing a royal kilt, on a slender androgynous anatomy, that was later on enlarged and further masculinized. Fourth, finally, some reliefs showed from the beginning, it seems 76 the reigning queen in a fully masculine guise, while all her previously carved figures were, probably at the same time, altered to display the same image of a virile pharaoh, with larger stride and stature. Many of these reworked depictions were simply smoothed and recarved, as usual. But in quite a number of cases, the surface of the wall was deeply cut out on about 15 centimeters, following a rectangular frame, all over the queen's figure, and the regular hole or niche to use Camino's words, thus produced was then filled with a new slab of stone cemented with plaster, ready for a new decoration. In this final stage of the decoration of Buen Temple during the reign of Hatshepsut, it seems that the masculinized images of the reigning queen were displayed in more or less complementary distribution with the figures of a male pharaoh. Even if the situation is now blurred by the present state of conservation of the monument whose upper courses are lost, and by the reworking of the decoration after Hatshepsut's death at the beginning of the sole reign of her ex, Corrigent and during her proscription. It is clear that, at that moment, Thutmose III was back in the iconography of kingship on temple walls, at least on five occasions in this monument but, at the same time, his father, Thutmose II, still occupied a very prominent place in the iconographical discourse and therefore in the ideology of the yet recently crowned Queen Hatshepsut. As Kaminos explains, in our monument not less than eleven records are explicitly commemorative of him in one way or another, in seven of them his name is a later interpolation, in four of them his name is undoubtedly original. And this includes an exceptionally well-preserved scene where the deceased king, though presented as if he was still alive and active appears facing, the local god, Horus of Buen, in the innermost part of the temple's sanctuary but, despite this apparent sharing of temple decoration with one or another male king, every dedicatory inscription of the monument was engraved in the sole name of Hatshepsut. Another much more important monumental project of the female, sovereign in this early period of her reign was, of course, her temple of millions of years, the Yezer Yezeru at Drel Bihari. Evidence from this site perfectly corroborates the different trends and characteristics highlighted by the decoration history of the southern temple of Buen. In this case, the initial architectural works were considerably more significant, and they no doubt took much more time. This is probably why, in wall decoration, only the last stages of the evolution of royal iconography attested at Buen can be found in Drel Bihari. And, more recently, A drew attention to the androgynous aspect of Hatshepsut's depictions in the main sanctuary of the temple, in all likelihood the earliest decorated part of the monument. Just like in Phase 3 of Buen Temple's decoration, she is portrayed in full regalia, with the short ritual kilt of pharaohs, a naked chest, and a gracefully thin anatomical rendering, plainly more slender than the one of men in ancient Egyptian artistic conventions. And, maybe more importantly, substantiating this reading, Quiak has demonstrated that these androgynous figures, still with elusively feminine, breast were originally painted in pink-like, or orange light ochre, that is, a hue willingly halfway between the traditional yellow for women and red for men, and like in Buen, again, Thutmose III has now made his reappearance in the official imagery of royal authority, indeed, if such androgynous representations of Pharaoh Matkara performing daily cult rites in front of the statue of Amun occupied the walls of the southern half of the main sanctuary the decoration of the latter's north wall was composed by two scenes around a door with a double dedicatory inscription in the sole name of Hatshepsut.
depicting the young king Thutmose the third engaged in a ritual action that complemented the one of his aunt on the opposite Thutmose II. He was also portrayed twice just next door, in the previous room, the so-called Bart Hall most likely decorated soon after, under a panel with a similar image of his father Thutmose I, the latter's wife, Queen Oms, and Princess Neferubadi, all of them turning their backs to the sanctuary, as guest deities in the Temple of Amun. The analysis of the statuary program of the Yezer Yezerud temple allows for an even more precise characterization of the evolution of Hatshepsut's official image. The late R. Tefnin devoted his doctoral dissertation to the subject and was able to demonstrate that this evolution took place in three main phases with two intermediate stages, which need to be distinguished, a first feminine phase, that is, with the iconography of a female pharaoh, for the inception of the reign then an androgynous step, when the reigning queen considerably reduced the iconographical explicitness of her femininity and, at the same time, put forward the insignias of her royal status, and, finally, a definitely masculine phase, with a fully masculinized image of her power, until the end of the corrigency but, more significantly, he showed that this evolution involved an important physiognomic metamorphosis that we have to consider closely. The first face of Hatshepsut's depictions was actually a feminine or feminized version of the official physiognomy of her three direct predecessors, which was itself deeply inspired by not to say copied from the iconography of Senwisrit I, conceived some five centuries earlier. This is a quite neutral or unpersonalized visage, with a rather strong angular jaw, that determines a more, or less square face when seen from the front, while opened eyes under, almost horizontal eyebrows, a slight but clearly perceptible smile, and a straight nose. This facial type is systematically attested on all the monuments from the Regency period, including the Semna Temple in the name of Thutmose III, the so-called Nedi Menu, the Niches structure from Karnak, the Tura Limestone Bark Shrine from the same site, and so on, but also on all the preserved faces from the original decoration of the Southern Temple of Buen or on the just-discussed Hatshepsut's reliefs of the main sanctuary in Drel Bihari. In statuary, the best examples are provided by the series of the Asirides Zé, from the four corners of the bark room, just before the main sanctuary. Hatshepsut gradually constructed, 